Hello and welcome to the University of Auckland's Nectar onboarding videos. These six videos are a practical hands-on guide to getting up and running with a remote Windows machine. This is the second video in the series and in this video we will be covering launching a Windows instance at the University of Auckland. Specifically, we will look at selecting the correct image to launch, selecting a suitable flavor, and we will discuss flavors in a little more detail, and then building the instance. As with the previous video in this session, some of the details that we describe are specific to the Nectar cluster at the University of Auckland. I'm going to try and remember to point out these details uh, where there is something that is specific to Auckland, uh, but uh, be aware that there are some that I probably will miss. So I would encourage you to check with your local node before following these instructions if you are not using the University of Auckland Nectar. Having said that, I'm now going to move to the dashboard where at the end of the last video we had select successfully requested an allocation and I had moved from my trial project into the project that had the, re the resources that I had requested as part of that allocation. So here we are back in the Nectar dashboard. Uh, if you follow my cursor you can see that the project that we are in is the Workshops CER project. This is a project that has been set up for testing purposes for the Centre for E-Research. If we look at the summary of this project, we can see that there are 15 instances or virtual computers available to us, 64 CPUs and 256 gigabytes of RAM, as well as a total of 300 gigabytes of volume storage or disk space available. In order to launch an instance, first thing that we need to do is to select the instances from the Compute tab. Click on Instances. It takes a few minutes, to, a few moments to load. And what we should see is a new page where we have several existing instances in this case. If this is the first time that you have used your project, you won't see any machines that you have created uh, because this will be a fresh project with no instances in it. The other difference that you will note is the delete instances and the more actions button will not be visible until you have created at least one instance. In order to start a new virtual machine, first we need to select the Launch Instance button. When we click this, this brings up a new page for us to fill in. We need to provide an instance name for it. And like anything um, related to IT, the more specific your naming, the easier it is for you in the future when you come back to this to try and remember exactly what was this virtual machine created for. So I am going to call this one my video test. I'd encourage you to put in some short description um, again, this provides you with more information so that you can identify what this is for. So, for and just to check to ensure that you are in the correct availability zone. 
for Auckland users, that will be Auckland. For people who are using Nectar at other nodes, please check with your local node what availability zone you should be in. Checking, I can see that I'm in the Auckland zone, so I don't need to change anything. But if I did need to change something, I could click the drop down and select the correct availability zone. The count is the number of clones of this virtual machine that you want to create. In most cases, a single virtual machine would be sufficient. If we then click the next button, this brings us to the source. And the source is the operating system that we're going to be installing on our virtual machine, on our remote computer. In order to run Windows, we need to change the select boot source from an image to an instance snapshot. And that can be done by clicking the drop down box and selecting instance snapshot. When we do this, there will be a list of snapshots available for us to select. As you can see in this case, there is only one because of the way this project has been set up. If there are, however, many, it is possible to use the search bar and if you type UOA for Auckland users, this will give you University of Auckland specific images. In this case, the image that I want to use is UOA Server 2012, which is a copy of Windows Server 2012. Once I've identified that source, if I come to the right hand side, there's a button with an up arrow in it. If I click that button, I now see under the allocated space that the image of the instant snapshot UOA Server 2012 has been selected. Having chosen an appropriate operating system to install on my virtual machine, I then click Next, and this brings me to a list of flavors. There are four groups of flavors, and we discussed these briefly when we were looking at allocations in the last video. T flavors, so the T3 flavors, are tiny flavors. These have small amounts of resource um, and are designed to test um, small snippets of code, for example. In most cases, you won't be using those. If you have selected CPU optimized flavors in your allocation request, you will see C3 flavors. Those are your CPU optimized flavors. M3 flavors are the standard balanced flavor that are the default for most use cases in Nectar. If you have selected RAM optimized flavors, you will also see R3 flavors, which are the RAM optimized version. When you look at a flavor, you can see there are several columns. The first one is the number of CPUs that you are allocating to your virtual machine. There's also the amount of memory that is attached. And then there is a certain amount of disk space which is allocated to store the operating system on. You'll see that there's a column called ephemeral disk. Uh, this column is no longer used. It is there to provide backwards compatibility for earlier versions of Nectar. In order to create a Windows virtual machine, we need a minimum amount of disk space to hold the operating system. And if you look at the T flavors, you can see that there is a caution mark next to the root disk space. When you hover over that, 
you can see there are information about that caution that tells us that those flavors do not have enough space available for the operating system. So we need to go ahead and choose a flavor. For this machine, I don't need a lot of processing power, so I'm going to select either an M3 medium or an M3 small. Once I've made my choice to select that flavor, again, I come to the right hand side looking for the button with the up arrow and I click that. The flavor I have selected is moved into the allocated space so I can see what it is that I'm going to be building. If I make a mistake, then I can select a different flavor and that will change the flavor that is allocated. So we'll go back to the M3 small in this case. I'm now ready to launch my instance. Now at this point I wish to just quickly draw your attention to the key pair option. This is something that is really important if you are going to be launching a Linux version of a Nectar virtual machine and I would remind you that if you are using Linux rather than a Windows VM that you need to select the key pair option and then either bring in a SSH public key that you have generated on your local machine or create a key pair through Nectar. Now this is beyond the scope of what we're going to cover in this video. If you do need to do this and you are having difficulties with it, please contact either your local Nectar node or if you are based at the University of Auckland, get in touch with the Centre for eResearch and we'll be able to help walk you through that process. So once we've established all of this, the next thing we need to do is to launch our instance and we do that by clicking the launch instance button at the bottom. When I click, there's a short delay um, and what I should see is a little blue box comes up telling me that there is a scheduled creation of one instance. The page will refresh and it takes a little bit of time depending on your network speed and you can see now that my instance is in a build status and the current task is scheduling. This takes a few minutes so I'm just going to pause now and I'll come back when we have finished creating that instance. Okay so we're back and um, that took a little longer than normal uh, but now as you can see, my instance name Chris Video Test uh, exists. It's based on the UOA server 2012 image, and it has had an IP address allocated to us. Now, this is an important number that we will use later when it comes to time to log in to our remote machine. It's based on the M3 small flavor and good thing to check is the status to make sure that it's not in an error state. So we can see here that the status is active. It's based at Auckland, it's currently running and it's been in existence for six minutes. So this brings us to the end of this video. In the next video we will look at how we apply security groups so that we ensure that we are able to access this instance from our local computer. Until then, I hope you have a good day.